Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Anthony, with AJ Audio and Production, and welcome to my home studio and YouTube channel. Now, today we're on day two of 30 Days to a Better Mix, and today we're going to talk about kissing it. Keep it simple, stupid. You got to kiss your project, man. Uh, what I'm going to show you guys today is a project that I just got. Uh, not my project. No artist that I work with. I actually downloaded the uh, multi-tracks uh, from a website. This is my first time listening to it. And what I want you guys to get from this is whenever you get a new project in, try to try your best to make that project sound good, make it sound nice without adding any plugins on it at all. Uh, just keep it bare minimum. Just get the levels right. And then once you get the levels right, you pretty much know where the songs are going to go and you know what you're going to need um, from that point. Uh, but if you if you just start soloing stuff and bringing up the vocal and just start adding stuff, uh, you're going to bog down your CPU. You're going to overprocess the song. It's not going to sound natural. Some songs are better that way if you're doing like pop or electronic and stuff like that. But this is a live band song. Uh, you want to start off with just a basic dry what whatever they gave you from the studio um, or whatever you recorded from the studio nothing extra start off with that and then once you got the basis for that then you can make the assessment of what EQs you need to do what compressors you need to do uh, what type of side chaining and, and processing and stuff that you need to get into so let's hop right into this session check it out and uh, hope you guys get something good from this all right all right guys so here we go we're in the session and as you see here, uh, we got full drum kit. This is a good recorded session. We got kick, kick out, snare top, snare bottom. Got a rack tom, got floor tom, got overheads. Uh, we got a chamber drum. Um, we got a room mic. Um, we got bass, guitar one and two, uh, which I think both of those are just... Um, same cabinet just two different microphones uh yeah looks looks about the same looking at the waves here yep same cabinet two microphones um then we have um so we got stereo guitar uh we got organ we got lead vocal i added a reverb and a delay track for the vocals and then we have some background vocals. We got two tracks of background vocals. So uh, let's just get into it. And I'll show you guys how I start off a rough mix to understand what I got. All right, let's play it. What's this in the beginning? It sounds like they may just be playing around a little bit. Let me uh, fast forward a little bit here. Get into the song. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the drums. Just kick in, kick out. And I'm just looking for a balance level. That's all I'm looking for. Snare top. Snare bottom. Just listen for that scissor to come in. That's good. Got rack one, floor tom. Not hearing much of that yet. That's fine. Let's go overheads. Overheads, I'm turning them up just until I hear them active on the track. That's all I'm listening for. Chamber. So it's like a, that sounds like a room mic that may be way far back. Yeah. Give a little bit of that. Let's get a little, little room mic in there. Room mic sounds good. All right, let's get some bass in there. That's 
So this sounds like a keyboard bass, sounds like a synthesizer bass. And I'm just balancing, making sure that my bass doesn't go louder than my kick. I want them to kind of match each other and complement each other. Let's go guitar amp. There it is. Bring up the other one. There we go. About a little organ in there. Let's get some organ going. And what I'm doing, I'm just turning it up until I could hear it in the mix. Just getting some basic levels going. Nothing fancy. I've already kind of pre-panned everything of where I, I would naturally sit it in my mix, so I'm not having to worry about that. No more bottom in on that kick. There we go. Yeah, this is good. And that's pretty much the whole band right there. Well, not pretty much, it is. No more in this room. Let's see. Yeah, that room sounds nice. That chamber gives me a little natural reverb for the drums. Yeah. That's what this lead vocal's doing. that's the end of the song okay so we made it through the whole song <laughs> and i got pretty much my rough mix on there of how i want that to sound or at least enough for me to know what is missing so let's just play back from the beginning with everything added let's see where we go Now, I can already tell right now that the lead vocal is going to need a little help with a little bit of compression to kind of bring it out a little bit. So let's grab one right quick. There's a compressor. Let's see. Medium release and little makeup gang. Stressing all the wasting hips. Nobody right. The world is sick. World is sick. World is sick from I'm gonna copy that same compressor over to my background vocals for now. Throw that reverb on my background vocals as well. I think I can bring my overheads down a little bit. Yeah. Oh, beautiful maiden. So remember what I told you guys on remember what I told you guys on day one about compression. Compression is going to make the louder things a little softer. Oh, what am I mic doing? Make the louder things a little softer and the softer things a little louder. Uh, so basically, if you have something that's hitting the volume that's way up here 
and the lower point of your vocal is down here or instrument, whatever it is. Your compressor, basically, you're setting a threshold and saying, okay, once you pass maybe this level here. So once my vocal gets past this level, I want to compress that vocal by um, one or by two or three or whatever. That's your ratio, right? So that's your threshold. You, you tell it when to hit it, and then your ratio tells you how much to compress it. Um, so then those high, those, those, uh, those um, louder dynamic parts of the take will be brought down just a little bit in the mix. At the same time, your lower stuff, of course, it stays down here, but that's where you use uh, what's called makeup gain. And that makeup gain basically brings up the overall volume of that track, and it allows for the lower vocals to be uh, go from here to up here a little bit, right? And then your louder stuff is still being brought down here, so then it creates like this... Um, a tighter dynamic range uh, for that vocal or that instrument. Some instruments you want to be extremely dynamic, uh, but I know with vocals, a lot of times you want to tighten up that dynamic range. That way when uh, someone's singing soft, you can hear them. When someone starts singing loud, it's not overpowering the track. And as you can see here, with just basic leveling of the, um, of the faders, just getting the faders level, I did that in less than 20 minutes um getting the faders level throwing on a compressor and now i can listen to it and say okay this is what i need the bass to sound like this is what the drums need to sound like uh this is what the guitar needs to sound like um i can then start going in and doing some eqing and processing without doing too much because it already sounds good as it is so you don't want to overdo it you want to keep that natural feel to this type of song i wouldn't want to over process this and make it sound you know way too big for what it is, you know? So let's listen again. Sounding good though. It was recorded real well. Even from a mirror, but that her dukes are not the daisies. I got a trick for reverb. I'll show y'all that in another video. That'll come up sometime during these 30 days. See how the vocal cuts through that reverb? That's because the presets or the settings that I put in there. I'll show you guys that. Coffee in cigarettes, calorie news around the neck. Don't let up. If you look at my master fader, plenty of headroom over there. I like it. I can live with it. I can live with it. All right. So I think that's where I'll end today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed that. This was day two. Kiss it. Keep it simple. Stupid. Keep it extremely simple. Whenever you get a new project, get a new mix into your studio. Let me adjust my mic a little bit. Get a new mix into your studio before you start going in there and just start chopping it up with EQ, slapping all kinds of uh, compressors and gates and stuff on your drums. Just listen to what the drums sound like naturally. And uh, a lot of times you'll find that if it was recorded well, there's not a lot that you really need to do to this song. If I were mixing this song professionally, I probably wouldn't do much at all. Just a little EQ on the drums, a uh, little compression on the drums, a uh, little EQ and compression on the guitar. That's about it. Um, the organ sounds pretty good. Vocals sound really good. Just some uh, quick EQs on that and uh, simple compression on that. And uh, pretty much it, man. A little reverb. I didn't even throw any delay on there. Didn't need it. Um, but that's a good way to get started. That's how you get started on your mixes. Uh, stop getting mixes and just immediately start slapping every plug in um, that you can think of on the track. It's gonna it's gonna mess it up. It's it's gonna it's not gonna sound natural. It's gonna bog down your system. Uh, you're gonna end up frustrated uh, because you're not getting that clean sound that you're looking for. Uh, so again, message of the day. 
Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss it. Make sure y'all click that subscribe button. Click that notification bell icon so that you can be notified whenever I upload new content on this channel. Thank you guys again for tuning in to my channel. This is day two of 30 Days to a Better Mix. Hope y'all enjoyed it. See y'all tomorrow. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.